turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Tonight we'll be concluding what is called the Sermon on the Mount. Um, Jesus began this teaching to the disciples, those first uh, four that he'd called, and he began with the Beatitudes, which is kind of a summary or a preface or just an outline for what he covers in the rest. He continues by giving us application, examples, definition to what these Beatitudes are. Now this message of the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount, this is not a great moral teaching. It cannot be applied to the business world today. I've said many times, this message would not be found on the bookshelves or you will not find titles based upon this in Simon & Schuster's log of books. It is not how to have a better life. It is not a self-help system. This message cannot be taught like so many times Sunday school messages are taught. It's not a situation that these are the good things and these are the bad things. All you have to do is do the good things and avoid the bad. We truly cannot do any of these things in our own strength. And this message is not a message for necessarily the masses. This is not for everyone. This message is not given to all people. This message is for a select few. It is for those who are called to follow this message. This message is for the disciple as Jesus is addressing his first called disciples. These are principles for discipleship. This message for, is for those who are called to be disciples. Now we've said many times before, salvation is absolutely a free gift, but discipleship has a great cost. Salvation costs us nothing. Discipleship costs us everything. If you'll turn back to chapter 5, a few pages back, let's review what these Beatitudes are, starting in verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are, the, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Jesus then continues on in chapter 5 and 6, and we'll conclude it tonight in chapter 7, giving definition to these Beatitudes. He spoke about the life of the disciple being salt and light to the world. The disciple's life is living and teaching the word of God. The disciple's life is reconciling with others. The disciple's life is a matter of knowing. It's a matter of our heart, not just our outward actions. Retaliation has no place in the life of the disciple because love because the love of others rules our heart we love both our brothers and our enemies 
Our good works are done in secret as a disciple. They're not done before men. Prayer is foundational as our relationship is based upon this for the disciple. And a disciple has no look for treasure upon this earth, but knows that our reward is in heaven. And a disciple is anxious for nothing because God holds our lives in his hands. And continuing on with this theme of continuing to break down the Beatitudes, he continues in chapter 7. Chapter 7, verse 1. Judge not that you, that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you seek the speck that is in your brother's eye and do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take out the log out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is holy and do not throw your pearls before pigs lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. We are followers of Jesus Christ. As a follower, our focus is not on who is around us. Our focus is on Him, not others. It doesn't matter who's doing what beside us. If we are following Jesus, our eyes are on Him. As a disciple, we know that we are called to a special calling. And with a special calling, it is ridiculous for us to think that the same standard is for everyone. A doctor has a very special calling. He has a special level of education. He has a special level of experience. He takes a special oath. We do not judge others as we know that we are all worthy of judgment. If you are following Jesus, you can only be attentive on Him and yourself. Who He is and who you are. And as Jesus came to bring life, we are there to spread life, not judgment. Verse 7, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receive, and the one who seeks, finds, and to the one who knocks, it will be open. Or which one of you has a son, asks him for bread, and he will give him a stone. Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask of him? As disciples, we have confidence that where God guides, God provides. But this is in con context. In the context that we are receiving here of these good things that will be given to us and looking to him for provision, that in this life we will have poverty for the riches of heaven. We will have sadness for his comfort. We will have humility for an inheritance. We will have hunger for satisfaction in him. That there will be mercy for mercy. There will be purity to see God. Peacemaking to be sons. And there will be persecution for a kingdom. Verse 12. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, also to them, do, to, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many. 
For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. This narrow gate is not about our sins. This is not about do nots or do's. And the things that we do, don't do can never be claimed by the believer as our works. Works are not things that we don't do. Works are things that we do. The narrow gate, it's simply Jesus Christ. He is the only gate to salvation. Verse 15, be aware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but every diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will recognize them by their fruits. We believe that all gifts of the Spirit are absolutely active today. Both the sign gifts and the other gifts, all of them are active today. They were given to the church. But there is a way to truly identify what is from God. First, the message will never conflict with the Word of God. There will never be a division between what is being prophesied or spoken about. But the other is also the fruit. Don't think that a prophet on Sunday will be a gossip on Monday. There is a true evidence of the Holy Spirit. A true evidence of the Holy Spirit. And that is that we exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. We have love. We have love. Not everyone, verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name or do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. This is confirmation that gifts have nothing to do with having the Holy Spirit. God allowed evil prophets in the Old Testament to prophesy like Balaam. He was an evil man. And when he would speak, he spoke words that God put in his mouth to bless the children of Israel, even though he wanted to curse them. And I'll also say that God opened the mouth of a donkey to speak. If you speak in tongues, praise God. But I'll tell you this. It doesn't make you any mightier than that donkey that day. It is the fruit of the Spirit that exhibits whether you have the Holy Spirit or not. Not whether you speak in tongues. Not whether you prophesy. You could even raise the dead. But if you have the Holy Spirit, you will have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Verse 24. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the wind blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does them and does, or everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Let's be honest here. The state of the Beatitudes really is the experience of mankind. Throughout all of human history, 
man regardless of culture, creed, race, has experienced poverty, sadness, humiliation, hunger, persecution. These storms of life happen to all of us. Floods happen to all of us. Winds happen to all of us. The difference is not the experience that we have. It is the foundation in which we are built upon. In this foundation, we have the common experience of mankind. But the common experience of mankind, if we're built on the foundation, no longer brings sadness, anxiety, hopelessness. But being on the foundation, we do not fall. And more than that, as Jesus opens the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount, He says, blessed or happy is the Happy is the person that goes through these storms, these common experiences of man, these floods, this poverty, this sadness, this humiliation, this hunger, this persecution. Happy is he. Verse 28. And when Jesus finished these sayings, the crowds were astonished, astonished at his teaching. For he was teaching them as one who had authority and not as their scribes. And we've concluded now this discipleship message, the Sermon on the Mount, this message of hope. Because although that we face the same things every human being experiences, we have the hope of poverty for the riches of heaven, sadness for comfort, humility for an inheritance, hunger for satisfaction, mercy for mercy, purity to see God, peacemaking to be sons, and persecution for a kingdom. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Pray, Father, that you would apply these things to our hearts tonight in Jesus' name. Amen.